Namaste yogis, thank you for joining me today. First is the answer to the last session's question. What is the most chemically contaminated vegetable or fruit on the market? Research seems to indicate that it is strawberries, followed closely by leafy greens such as spinach and kale. If you missed that session, please check it out. It includes a recipe for your own homemade veggie wash. And here is an update on another story. If you watched session number four on Astea, you remember that I showed an amaryllis that went directly to flower without first sending up leaves. At that time I said new leaves were emerging, but I was wrong. It was sending out a second flower stalk. Thomas Berry, scholar of world religions, author and mystic, once wrote, Gardening is an active participation in the deepest mysteries of the universe. I agree. You can plant basil seeds in the corner of your garden with great care that never sprout and then 20 feet away from your garden, on your lawn, uh, basil plants may pop up from seeds that naturally fell last year. That is the mystery of gardening. It is a cooperative effort between us humans and the divine. We do not always get the results that we want, but sometimes you are in for a pleasant surprise. If you have any mysterious gardening experiences, please share them in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. And now, let's begin our practice with a chant. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bonaktu Sahaviyam karavavahai Tejas vinavadi tamastu Mavid vishavahai Om shante shante shanti Today's talk is about tapas, one of the niyamas or observances. Tapas is a Sanskrit word which means heat or to burn. When applied to our yoga practice, it can mean uh, passion or self-discipline. Let us first take a look at what the yoga sutras say about tapas. Through ascesis or training of the senses or tapas, there comes a destruction of mental impurities and an ensuing mastery or perfection over the body and the mental organs of senses and actions. Destruction of mental impurities, mastery over the body, senses, and actions. This is what the spiritual quest is all about. There is a well-known metaphor in the ancient Hindu text, Kata Upanishad, which compares the human being to a chariot. In this metaphor, the horses represent the five senses, the reins represent the mind, the chariot represents the body, and the charioteer the intellect. The goal of the charioteer is to get a very important passenger to his destination. But this is not easy, because the horses are constantly distracted by interesting scenery, by grass on the roadside that it may wish to eat, or maybe upon seeing other horses. Unless they are controlled, they will each want to go their own way and do their own thing. And the charioteer will never get the important passenger to his destination. The charioteer must learn to control the horses and not allow them to wander off by skillfully using 
the reins. In real life, this is done through mental training, such as our yoga practice. We need to learn to focus and control our senses and to not get distracted by whatever is going on around us in the material world. Then there must be a guiding force behind it. Even if the charioteer learns to control the horses, if he does not know where he is going, then again, his important passenger will never make it to his destination. That force is called discrimination, or wisdom, or buddhi in Sanskrit. So who is the important passenger, and where are we taking him? The passenger is the Atman, or the individual soul, your soul. The destination is Kaivalya, or liberation. It is to be free from samsara, or the cycle of rebirth. Whether you are a yogi, and or Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, pagan, or a practitioner of any other faith or tradition, our goal is the same merging our soul with the divine. And the physical effort you make to attain this goal is tapas. People have long debated on what is the most effective spiritual practice. People often try to convert others to their own religion or even start wars because they believe that their beliefs and methods are superior to those of others. So which spiritual practice is right for us? Which will get us to our goal the quickest? The answer is very simple. It is the one that you can be passionate about. Someone raised Christian may be passionate about singing hymns praising Jesus, but have no interest in chanting Buddhist mantras. And that is okay. We must each choose our own path. Whatever path we choose, to reach the goal fastest, we must practice with passion. If you are waiting until your kids grow up, or until you retire, or until your spouse dies to begin your spiritual practice, then chances are you will not attain liberation in this lifetime. If you practice only one hour per week, when you go to your house of worship or a yoga class and forget about it for the rest of the time, you will never reach the goal either. A part-time effort produces part-time results. A one hour a week practice produces one hour a week results. There is a story of a yoga master and disciple. They were walking along the Ganges River one morning when the disciple asks the master, I want to be liberated and I want it really bad. Please tell me what I need to do to attain it. So the master says, come with me and enters the river. The disciple follows. When they are deep into the river, the master forcefully grabs the head of the disciple and holds it under the water. The disciple, unable to breathe, starts squirming and struggling. After a few seconds, the master releases him. The disciple gasps for air and then yells, What are you doing? Are you trying to kill me? Master replies, You really wanted air desperately at that moment, didn't you? To attain liberation, that is how badly you must want it. It has to be the most important thing in your life. Even athletes, musicians, or tradespeople do not attain a high level of mastery by practicing one hour a week. Whatever path you choose, what, whether it is yoga or some other form of spiritual practice, it cannot be an item on your long bucket list. It has to be a priority. Your passion, and your way of life. So that is the secret. Whatever path you choose, follow it with a passion and the door will be open to you. And now let's stand up for our practice.
We'll begin with Tadasana or Mountain Pose. Stand with your feet slightly apart, let your arms hang to your side naturally, and close your eyes. We will activate the three bandhas or locks while in Tadasana. The first is the Mula Bandha or Root Lock. Pull up your pelvic muscles as if you are holding in your urine. This bandha strengthens the pelvic muscles, improves bladder control, and helps with digestion. While holding the Mula Bandha, we will activate the Uddiyana Bandha or Abdominal Lock. Pull in your stomach muscles as if you're trying to fit into a tight pair of jeans. The Uddiyana Bandha strengthens the abdominal muscles and diaphragm, reduces belly fat, and purifies the digestive tract of toxins. While holding these two Bandhas, we will activate the Jalandala Bandha or throat lock. Pull your chin towards your chest and maybe swallow once. It is that swallowing point which is your Jalandala Bandha. The Jalandala Bandha regulates the respiratory system, stimulates the thyroid, strengthens the vocal cords, and increases the capacity to swallow. Engaging all three Bandhas simultaneously is called Maha Bandha. With your exhale, release the Bandhas and release the pose. Next, we will raise the arms up and down in circles. With your inhale, take your arms up, look up. Exhale, bring them back down. You can also use dumbbells in this exercise. Start with your arms down, and with your inhale, raise your arms up, look up, and exhale, lower. We will do about 10 of these movements, with or without dumbbells. Go at your own pace. If you have the balance, you can try it with your eyes closed. If you have shoulder issues and find this movement too difficult or painful, then you can raise your arms only halfway up. Try to keep the movement as smooth as possible. Next, we will raise the arms up and down from the front. With your inhale, raise your arms up, come to your tiptoes, exhale, lower. You can also use dumbbells for this exercise. If so, hold the dumbbells with the palms facing down, inhale, come up, and exhale, lower. Again, if you have shoulder issues, you can raise the arms just halfway up. Or if the balance is too difficult, just keep the soles of your feet on the mat. Or if you like a little extra challenge, you can try this with your eyes closed. Release the pose when you're done. Next is five-pointed star pose or Uttita Tadasana. It is also called Panchasana for the Sanskrit number five. In this pose, we extend out in five directions. The head extends upward as high as you can go. The arms extend out sideways as far as they can reach and the feet root into the ground. If you have the balance, try it with your eyes closed. Inhale and exhale, release the pose. Next is a variation of the last pose called Ekapada Tadasana or One-Legged Star Pose. Inhale, raise both arms up, exhale, tilt to the right. Your left big toe can remain on the mat, or you can lift your left leg off of the mat. Try to center your head between your arms, slightly tilting your head to the right. Try not to lean forward as you hold the pose.
Inhale, return to the center and exhale, release. We'll switch sides. When you're ready, inhale, raise both arms up. Exhale, tilt to your left. The right leg can be raised or the big toe can remain on the mat. Again, try to center your head between the arms and try not to lean forward as you hold the pose. Inhale, come back to the center, and exhale, release. Take a break. Next is Prasarita Padottanasana, wide-legged forward bend. Stand with your feet wide apart. As you exhale, fold forward, your hands can be in one of the following positions. Hands on the mat, elbows extended or bent. Or you can grab your opposite elbow with your hands or your hands can be anywhere along your legs. Find a comfortable position and hold the forward bend. Next we are going to add a twist. Place your right hand on the mat, fingers pointing to the left. With your inhale, spin open with your left arm, Looking upwards, reaching as high as you can with your left hand. Eyes can be open or closed. Feel a nice stretch along your extended arms and a nice twisting stretch in your torso. Inhale, and with your exhale, return your left hand to the mat. Just hang in the center using your favorite arm position. Notice the effects of the pose that you just did. And now let's repeat it to the other side. Place your left hand on the mat, fingers pointing to the right. With your inhale, spin open with your right arm. And reach as high as you can with your right hand, looking upwards. Feeling a nice stretch in both arms as well as a twisting stretch in your torso. Relax and breathe deeply. Inhale and exhale. Bring your right hand back to the mat. Once again, we'll hang in the center. Observe any changes in your body. With your inhale, slowly come up one vertebra at a time. And with your exhale, release the pose. Great job. Now let's come down to our knees. The next pose is called Parigasana or Gate Pose. Step out with your right foot and place the sole of the foot onto the mat. Place the right hand on the right thigh. And with your inhale, raise your left arm up, looking upwards. If available, you can slide your right hand towards your right shin. And if you have the balance, you might try closing your eyes. We will hold it here. This pose stretches the intercostal muscles between the ribs and tones the inner thighs and waistline. Inhale, slowly come up. Exhale, release. Come back to the center and we'll switch sides. Step out with your left foot and place the sole of the foot onto the mat. Place your left hand on your left thigh. With your inhale, raise your right arm, stretching upwards. And if available, you can slide your left hand towards your left shin. Try to look upwards and bend straight to the side as you hold the pose. You should feel a nice stretch along your right torso and left leg.
Inhale, slowly come up and exhale, release the pose. Let's come into table pose. If you are doing this on a hard surface, you may wish to put a blanket under your knees. Next, we'll do a pose called balancing table pose or in Sanskrit, Dandayamana Bharmasana. Extend your right arm forward parallel to the ground. Extend your left leg back, kicking out from the heel. Try to make a straight line from your right fingertips all the way to your left heel. For those of you ready for more of a challenge, you can evolve this into Vyagrasana or Tiger Pose, grabbing your left foot with your right hand. This pose improves balance and posture, increases mental focus, tones the arms and legs, and strengthens the core. Inhale, and with your exhale, release the pose. Now let's switch sides. Extend your left arm forward, kick your right heel straight back. Try to make a straight line from your left fingertips all the way to your right heel. If you feel like challenging yourself, bend your right knee, reach back with your left hand and grab the right foot with the left hand into tiger pose. Look downwards and keep your neck relaxed. Inhale, and with your exhale, release the pose. Let's take a short break in child's pose. Bring your arms forward, knees apart, and lower your hips to your heels. You can rock side to side if it feels good. Next is Vashistasana, or side plank pose. You may choose between the modified version or full version. Step back with your right foot and plant the sole of the foot into the mat. Bring your left shoulder directly above your left wrist. With your inhale, spin open with your right arm and look upwards. Reaching as high as you can with the right hand. If you wish to try the full Vashistasana, extend your left knee and place your left foot in front of or behind the right foot. Vashistasana improves the balance and strengthens the arms, shoulders, wrists, lower back, and legs. Remember, you don't have to do the most difficult pose. Just pick the one that works for you better today. Inhale, and with your exhale, return to table pose. Now let's do the other side. Step back with your left foot and plant the sole of the foot into the mat. Bring your right shoulder over the right wrist and with your inhale, spin open with your left arm, reaching as high as you can and looking upwards. If you'd like to try the full Vashistasana, extend out your right knee and place the right foot in front of or behind the left foot. Look upwards and close your eyes for a little extra challenge. Inhale and exhale, release. Come to a seated position. Next, we'll do a pose called Crown Chasana or Heron Pose. Extend your left leg along the mat with the toes pointing upwards. Bend your right knee with either the toes pointing outwards or the sole of the right foot against the left inner thigh. We are going to raise the left leg and hold it. If you like to use a strap, you can also use a strap in this position. With your inhale, raise your left leg. You can hold your foot or your ankle or your calf or put a strap around your left foot. If you are more flexible, you can grab your right wrist with your left hand, place your left foot on the left hand and extend out your left knee. Try to keep your back as straight as possible. This pose strengthens the hips, back, and hamstrings and improves circulation and digestion. Inhale. 
inhale and with your exhale we will release the left leg with control extend your right leg take a little break and then we'll switch sides when you're ready bend the left knee with the foot pointing outwards or the sole of the foot inside the right thigh grab anywhere along the right leg or your strap and try to extend the right knee out the best that you can keeping the back straight if your knee does not extend out completely that's okay it's something to work towards With your exhale, we'll release the right leg with control. Extend out your left leg and relax. Now sit in any comfortable position. We'll do some shoulder circles. Let's bring the hands to the shoulders and make 10 slow big circles with your elbows in each direction. Notice any tight spots or popping or clicking sounds. Every day it's a little different. This exercise helps improve blood circulation to the shoulders and helps tone the arms. After doing 10 circles, switch directions. When you finish, release your arms. We'll do a few more neck stretches. With your inhale, let your head fall back, looking upwards, feeling a nice stretch to the front side of your neck. For a little deeper stretch, you can try and press your chin upwards. Since the neck and shoulders are connected, a lot of times we can relieve shoulder pain by doing neck exercises. Next, we will pull the chin towards our chest to stretch the back side of the neck. Return to the center. Next, we will tilt the head to the right. If you would like a little deeper stretch, place your right hand on the head and gently press downwards. Feeling a nice stretch to the left side of your neck. Keep your left shoulder relaxed. With your exhale, release the pose and we'll switch sides. Tilt your head to the left and for a deeper stretch, place your left hand on the head and gently press your head downwards, keeping the right shoulder relaxed. With your exhale, release. Let's lie on a mat with the knees bent and soles of the feet on the floor. We'll do a variation of an exercise called Russian twist. With your inhale, raise your arms above the head. Exhale, take the arms to the right side of the body. Inhale, come back to the center, arms up. Exhale, take the hands between the knees. Inhale, lie back down, arms up. Exhale, take the arms to the left side of the body. Inhale, lie down, arms up. Exhale, bring the hands between the knees. Inhale, lie back down. So that counts as one set, and we will do eight sets total. If you feel like challenging yourself, you can do this exercise with the feet off of the mat. This exercise tones the core, obliques, and shoulders, burns belly fat, and strengthens the spine. By lying on the back after each movement, you are protecting the lower back. Many people believe that if you do exercises faster, you get more benefit. That is not true. 
By taking longer to do each movement and doing it consciously, you are actually getting more benefit. And by doing the exercise in tone with your breath, you are more efficiently oxygenating the body. If you find that 8 sets is too many, just do as many as you can and take a break. With regular practice, you can slowly build up your strength. With the knees still bent, we'll go right into the next pose called Setu Bandhasana or Bridge Pose. Place your hands next to your body, palms facing down. With your inhale, raise the spine from the hips to the base of the neck. And with your exhale, lower from top to bottom. We will repeat this movement 10 times. Make sure you look straight up as you do this movement in order to avoid injuring your neck. Try to make the movement as smooth as possible. This pose stretches the chest, neck, spine, and hips, strengthens the pelvic muscles, improves circulation and digestion, and relieves back pain and tired legs. It is a great pose to add to your daily practice. We are adding movement today, but there is also a version where you hold the pose upwards without this up and down movement. When you finish, hug your knees into the body and rock from side to side, massaging out your back. Next, we'll do a pose called Supta Baddha Konasana, or Reclining Bound Angle Pose. Bring the soles of the feet together on the mat and let your knees fall open. Your arms can be above your head, or to your side in a T, or on your thighs, or on your stomach, or even behind your head. Whatever feels good to you. This is a nice pose to end your practice with. This pose stretches the inner thighs, stimulates the abdominal organs, relieves lower back pressure, and is very relaxing. It is a good pose for people in a wheelchair or for those who sit all day long. Slowly release, hug in your knees, and rock side to side, massaging out the back. Using both hands, push yourself to a seated position. Today we will do a practice called yogic breathing, or sectional or three-part breathing. Most people's breath is shallow. A shallow breath is not only inefficient in oxygenating the body to keep it healthy, it also results in mental unrest. If you ever observed someone with a short fuse, their breath is usually very shallow and choppy. Because of this, any little thing agitates them. Or think of your own breath when you are in a rush or under a lot of stress. If you have ever observed the breath of a sage or martial arts master, it is usually deep and smooth. A deep and smooth breath creates a calm, non-reactive mind. 
you probably have been taught. Before you react in anger, take a deep breath. That is actually good advice. This practice can be done at any time of the day, preferably on an empty stomach. It is good practice to do right when you get up in the morning to start your day with a calm mindset. Start with a couple of minutes and you can work your way up to 10 minutes or longer. You can even incorporate this breath into your meditation practice. We will start by thinking of the lungs in three parts, the lower, the middle, and the upper. We will first breathe while directing the air to the lower lungs for a few breaths, then the middle lungs for a few breaths, and then the upper lungs for a few breaths, and then we will combine the three. It is important to sit with the spine straight and chest open to get maximum benefit. You can sit in a chair if you prefer. We will close the mouth and breathe from the nose. So let's begin. First is abdominal breathing. We will inhale and expand the stomach out like a balloon then exhale, pull in the stomach muscles. As we do this, visualize the air entering the lower portion of your lungs. The corresponding mudra is chin mudra, with the index finger and thumb of each hand touching. Place your hands on your knees and close your eyes. Or if it is hard to get the feeling in the beginning, you can place your hands on your stomach. Gently press your hands into your stomach with each exhale. Let us begin the practice. Inhale, expand your stomach. Exhale, contract your stomach. Inhale, expand. Exhale, contract. Repeat this for a total of five times on your own. Next is thoracic or chest breathing. We will inhale and expand the chest. This is how many people normally breathe, so you may feel little change from your normal breath. Visualize the air entering and exiting the central portion of your lungs. The mudra for this is Chinmaya Mudra, folding in the outer three fingers from Chin Mudra. Now let's begin. Inhale, expand the chest. Exhale, release. Inhale, expand. Exhale, release. Continue three more times at your own pace. Next is clavicular or shoulder breathing. As you inhale, expand your shoulders and visualize the air entering the upper lungs. As you exhale, collapse the shoulders without collapsing the spine. You can exaggerate the movement until you get the feel for it. The mudra for this is Adi Mudra or fists with the thumbs tucked inside. Inhale, open the shoulders. Exhale, collapse. Inhale, open. Exhale, collapse. Do three more on your own. And finally, we will combine the three and do full yogic breathing. With the inhale, imagine the air flowing in from the stomach, chest, and shoulders. And with the exhale, the air exiting from the stomach, chest, and shoulders. You will notice that your breath is a little slower than the previous three breaths. That is what you want. For this breath, we will use Brahma Mudra, both fists over the navel. We will continue this breath for a couple of minutes. Just go at your own pace while visualizing the movement of the breath throughout your lungs. Now let's begin. Inhale, stomach, chest, shoulders. Exhale, stomach, chest, shoulders. Inhale. And exhale. Continue the practice.
When you finish your current breath, we'll end the practice. Next is Shavasana or Corpse Pose. You can pause the video and lie on the mat face up, hands away from your body, feet slightly apart, looking upward and closing the eyes. Relax as long as you like and when you feel ready, move your fingers and toes, head from side to side, perhaps do a few stretches or poses and then press the play button. We will end the practice with our final chant. I hope you enjoyed today's practice. The importance in your tapas is to do something every day. Whether it is a five minute breathing exercise before your meal or yoga postures when you get up in the morning or a self-reflection session every night before you go to bed. Always remember, a part-time practice only produces part-time results. And now let us end our practice with a chant. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Badrani Pashantu Ma Kaschitukha Bhagbhavet Om Shante Shante Shantihi Thank you for joining me today. Namaste.